Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that we can again come together. We ask that your Holy Spirit will abide with us. For you said that you would be willing to give us the Holy Spirit to in those who ask. In Luke 11, 13, if he then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more should Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to men ask him? But we ask that the Holy Spirit will be given us, and then we place the promise of Acts 5, 32, which says, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. Mm-hmm. Give us power, not only to hear the word of God, but to heed and obey the scriptures. Mm-hmm. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, I, want, I would like to start the program today first thanking many of you who has been calling for the a free copy of the 28 pages uh, that we have on Christ's second coming. And then, uh, or in the other side says the eternal gospel, uh, you know, material, uh, the 28, uh, 28, 28 pages, uh, bring you a final event, main chapters of a book that we have been also offering many times the book called Great Controversy. Um, Again, thank you. And also thank you for uh, some of you who are making this possible. I don't have to tell you uh, how huge of a task is this. We are trying to cover all throughout North America with this going through zip code uh, using the postal service. Um, To give you an idea, each one of these issues being placed on each one of the homes, it, it is about, you know, the cost of a postage, U.S. postage. So you, you can add the numbers. Uh, we are still in, during this, uh, doing this campaign because obviously we see uh, the time that we're living, the, uh, we've been presenting to you documentations after documentations how this movement when I say this movement the movement of a political religious system trying to uh, promote and to bring about uh, using the the work unions Mm -hmm. organizations uh, also using uh, church leaders trying to introduce into this world or pushing into this world what is called the day, the Lord's day or the day to worship, okay? Family and climate as well. Yeah, using family, climate, and uh, the, the work union, like I said. So if there is ever in the need, if we are ever in the need, in the need to see this being spreading, being spread as... as yeah. The leaf of autumn. Yeah, it's, we, it's should, we should be spreading this as the leaves of autumn. Why? Because the most important thing is we want you to get ready for the second coming of Christ. For Jesus shows us very clearly from the scriptures that in Matthew 24, 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That power and great glory is something that we need to be under, we need to understand. When Jesus comes, he's coming as king. He's not coming as a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. He's coming as king so that we need to get ready for that event. And at the same time, there are signs all around us showing us that event is very soon. The signs of a, of, of a national apostasy from the word of God in Christianity at large a sign that shows that the world today is rejecting God's law and trampling underfoot. 
and believing that anarchy and crime can continue at an unprecedented pace without being checked. A sign when we're watching situations where people are saying defund the police. A sign where we see racism and families being divided over issues that should not have been taking place, but should be carefully considered and looked at with more uh, in-depth uh, understanding of what is really happening. Mm -hmm. We see these signs taking place. Not only that, we also see the signs of war and crime and bloodshed reaching an all-time high. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, in the midst of that, we also see now the technology that's available to bring about a time when you cannot buy or sell along with pestilence in the land. Mm. And we see thousands are perishing because of the pestilence. Brothers and sisters, these are the signs that show us where we are. The days of Noah, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, all are staring us in the face. And yet these signs are unmistakable, along with the 19 sins found in 1 Timothy 2, 3, 1 through 5, shows us that we are closer than you think to the second coming of Christ and now we're heading for a time when through climate change and issues of labor unions, we're pushing for a work-free day of rest from the labor and a day for the family and businesses all to rest as we deal with climate change and La Dato C. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, we, have li we are living in an unprecedented time. God help us to get ready for this event. Amen, amen. So in, in view of all that, so I, I, again, thank you for being part of this uh, work that has been going on. And uh, those of uh, who has been part of this work, they, they know who they are. God bless you. And, and um, in the meantime, uh, you know, I, I feel very, in a hum very humble uh, to know that we can take Go to the Word of God, and in love, we can see the time of the history that we are living. And that's all, that, that's the main reason that we're presenting all this. Uh, we have talked about how this uh, global movement, do you know, as we have read before, Revelation 17 brings, we're talking about this woman, a, a church a globally, the influence of that organization being taking place. But you know that one of the most scary things that we see in Revelation 17 is that even that system is so clearly being presented, the system of a woman of a church, mm -hmm. okay, uh, having the golden cup, uh, sitting in many waters, many yes. people, many nations, yes. multitude, uh, what else can we say? Her cup was a cup of abominations. That's a result of her cup being yeah. abominations. A golden cup. A golden cup a full of the abominations of the filthiness of her fornication. He, he says full with the wine of fornication. Right of fornication. Uh, wine of fornication, Wine means what? Uh, and Patrick was sharing with us early on. What did you find out well, when you were talking well, about what wine? What does a wine represent? And the wine book. represents false doctrines. Mm -hmm. And it says in Revelation 17... Uh, verse 2, that the woman was was committing fornication with the kings of the earth, and it says the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Okay. No. What if, when you what join church and state, the doctrines are always lowered and, and, uh, and changed mm -hmm. from the pure wine of the Bible. Yeah. And if some people want to know why we might not be going into a lot of detail on some of the scriptures, because... In previous programs, we have been somewhere and uh, been over this chapter, and we've been over it in more detail in previous programs. Yeah. So some things we're just highlighting with you, but if you do have a comment and you want to know more about it, we'd be glad to answer it, but the best of our, best of our ability. Yeah. But at the same time, we want you to know from the scriptures what the Bible is saying. Mm -hmm. So it says here, wine, we know rep wine represents false doctrines, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's been false doctrines given to the nations to digest and eat up and drink up, okay? Right. Now, if we go to Isaiah 55, let, let's go quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of reviewing. Isaiah what? Mm -hmm. what? 55. Isaiah 55. It, it, it is being presented as part of the... Because that is a good wine. 
See, mm -hmm. again, Satan tried to counterfeit everything of God. Yes. Satan is a student of the Bible too, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But he started to deceive right. nations, people, good people, mm -hmm. okay? So he see that Jesus got to buy a wine. Well, yes. he create another wine, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a fermented wine, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, Isaiah 55, did I say? Thus of the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for the blessing is in it, so I will do for my servants' sake, that I may destroy them all. But in, in 55, mm -hmm. verse so 1. 50, so 55, verse 1. Okay, I think it's a, okay. it comes even... It comes, uh, it comes more clearer. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Come ye, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now, uh, Isaiah 55, <clears throat> 1, we're talking of Jesus, the, the call of God is, yeah. oh, everyone that thirsteth. Right. Right. God calls you to drink wine, but he right. says, come, come without money. Right. Without money means you must come in faith. Mm -hmm. And it says, come and buy. Mm -hmm. What are you going to buy from God? What, do you, what are you going to buy? It's the same thing in, in Revelation chapter 3. I counsel you to buy of me. Mm -hmm. What do you buy from God? In my, in, now you come in in faith, so what are you going <clears> to <throat> buy from me? Uh, you, well, you buy of him. You, um, he, uh, you, you're right. You get it. Go to Proverbs, read Proverbs 23, 23. Let's see what we're supposed to buy. <laughs> Proverbs 23? 23, 23. 23, 23. That's the ad, what you're going to say, because you, you, I know what you're thinking. I was giving you a text to go with it. It says, buy the truth and uh, sell it not, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Okay, so what do, you, what do we got? What do, what do, when the okay. Bible says, hold everyone that thirsteth? I'll say what I was thinking. Go ahead, go ahead. Buying means you have to make an effort. Yes, you have to make yeah. an effort. But now, what, when I, now it says, Hoy one thirst. What are you thirsting for? <clears throat> what do you remember about thirst? Water. I mean. Yeah, but blessed in the Beatitudes. Blessed are, the, oh. blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Okay, so, so what are we, so those who are going to buy from God must buy, some, buy because they what? They hunger and oh. thirst after what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Now, question, uh, but Jesus told you buy the what? But we're told we're to buy what, first of all? Buy the truth, mm. according to the Bible. We're mm. going to buy the truth. Now, question, is, buy truth, the truth. is truth righteousness? Yes. Yes, it is. How do, we, how do we know that truth is righteousness? Let's take a look. John 17, 17. Right. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The what's truth? The word is truth, word. right? Mm. So now, what is, this, what is the word mm. called? What's another word for the word? We call it scripture, right? Right. Yeah. All right. And in Daniel 10, 21, what does Gabriel tell Daniel in Daniel 10, 21? Yeah. Can, can, can you hold it right there? We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, we were talking about milk, but at the same time, I'm sorry, we were talking about buying. Buying means to buy the truth, right? Mm -hmm. And sell it not. So watch this, but what is truth? We said the word is truth. Now I took you to Daniel 10, 21. Can you read Daniel 10, 21 for me? But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. Notice Gabe, the angel Gabriel called it the what? The scripture, scripture of, of truth. truth. So truth is also the word of God, right? Amen. But the word of God is also called truth. But now what else is called also what? Scripture. Mm -hmm. So let's go to 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. Let's right. connect that right quick. Mm -hmm. What do we see? 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, <clears throat> for reproof, 
for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So truth Amen. is also connected to what? Righteousness. Right. Because the scriptures give instruction in what? Righteousness. Mm. All right. So therefore, we're going to find here that when he says buy and come and eat. Now, no, no, so now, now he's going to tell you buy what? Buy wine. Is wine connected to the scriptures, first of all, in, this, in a spiritual term? Can we connect wine to the scriptures? Now, we know what wine is spiritually, but can we, can we prove this? Can we connect it? Yes. Uh, when Jesus came, he compared his teaching with a good wine. Mm -hmm. Good wine. Remember? The, the good wine. Yeah. I think it's in Matthew. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about these, what, we'll yes. Oh, uh -huh. Okay. Let me, let me take you here for a moment. Uh -huh. Let's go to the Old Testament for a moment and let's oh, prove okay. something. Go to Daniel chapter 1, verse uh, 5. Mm -hmm. 1 8. Daniel 1 8. Okay. 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 And the king appointed him a daily provision of the what? The king's meat and of the wine which he drank. Right. So nourish him three years in the end of they might stand before the king. Now in verse 8, Daniel purposed his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Mm -hmm. But notice the king gave the wine for what? What was the purpose of the king? According to Daniel 1, 5. What was the, go to verse 5. What was the purpose of the king giving them wine? The king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So mm -hmm. nourishing them ah, for three years. So the wine was given for what? Nourishment. Don't miss that. Wine was given for nourishment. Okay, so what type of wine was Nebuchadnezzar serving at that time? Well, was he serving fermented wine or unfermented wine? Well, if it was nourishing, it was unfermented. It was unfermented yeah, wine, right. So, Bab so wait a minute, Nebuchadnezzar was king of what? Babylon. Right. And remember, ancient Babylon is a type for spiritual Babylon in the last days. Mm -hmm. Ancient Babylon served wine, but it served fermented wine. But the king believed that that wine was nourishment to the soul. So in the end time, the spiritual Babylon would be serving wine. And spiritual believe, Babylon would believe that their wine mixed with tradition would be nourishing to the people. Yeah. Right. It's as surely as back then. But let's go a bit closer. What did the Bible say nourishes us, okay? What, what, how are we to be nourished? Because Nourish is dealing with the nutrition of a person's physical health. But at the same time, we're talking about the nutrition of a person's spiritual health at right. the end of time. Let's take a look again. What type of wine did God himself have? So you're uh, saying Nebuchadnezzar served fermented wine. Fermented wine, but he believed it as what? Nourishment. nourishment. Right. Right. Okay. So we're looking at the issue of nourishment because that's what the wine is good enough to. Because the Bible is going to tell you, tells us to buy wine. So, so far as God telling us to buy fermented wine, or is God telling us to buy unfermented wine? Yeah, but, but by the way, one evidence that we see that that wine that Nabucodonosor, Nabucodonosor uh, uh, served a fermented wine was that Daniel and his friends, they, they refused to drink refused it. To right, drink. there you go. So now, go to Psalms of Solomon 8.2. Psalms of Solomon 8.2. Can you read that for me, Patrick? Song of Solomon. Psalms of Solomon 8.2. 8 verse 2 says, I would, I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house who would instruct me. I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranate. Now, mm. spiced wine is, called, is, called, is known as fresh grape juice. Mm. That's the fresh juice from the grape before it ferments. Mm. So therefore, God in his word does not promote us to drink fermented wine. The word of God is promoting from the Old Testament history first, is promoting the drinking of fresh grape juice. Right. This is why later in the New Testament, when Paul speaks to Timothy, he says, drink a little wine for right. the stomach's sake. Paul is not talking about telling him to get drunk. He is not telling him to violate the laws of health concerning wine in this case. He is telling him to take fresh grape juice to help settle his stomach. And we all know fresh grape juice can do that, yes. May I read another verse? Yes. Uh, I, that I read before, Isaiah 65, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now it comes in. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine, mm -hmm. new wine. is found in the cluster, cluster. Uh -huh. and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So will I do for my servant's sake that I may not destroy them all. Now See, notice, new wine is fresh juice of the grape, mm -hmm. which is fresh grape juice. Yeah. Now, what does the Bible say in the book of Proverbs concerning wine? Now, we have two types of wine. Yeah. We have a wine that can make you inebriated and drunk. And we have a wine that's good for nutritional purposes, for digestion, right? Right, right? So God uses physical wine to give us a better understanding and object lesson of spiritual wine, right? Mm -hmm. So now we've got two types of wine, just like we have two types of women. 
One woman is going to serve in two from types of one. doctrines. Two one that right. is truth. Yeah, we're going to come there. We're coming okay. there. We're going, to, we're going to connect the idea. Right. Wine is being used for nourishment. Now, in Proverbs 20, verse 1, the Bible says, what about wine from a, from a physical standpoint? Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So the Bible shows that wine can bring about what now? Deception. But what type of wine brings deception? Fresh wine of the juice, of the, the grape, fermented. or the fermented one? Which one brings Obviously deception? Fermented. Obviously the fermented. All right. So now let's go a little bit closer. Now let's see what wine is it that, is, that we can we see brings nourishment in the, in the spiritual sense now. Looking at wine from a spiritual sense now. Let's go here to 1 Timothy 4 and let's read verse 6. Can you read that for me, Patrick? 1 Timothy 4, verse 6 4, says, 4, 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. Wait a minute, nourished up in words of faith and good doctrine. So what words of faith? Words of faith is new wine. It's the fresh juice of the grape. Right. It's the spice wine of the pomegranate. That's the wine of sound doctrine, brothers, that we're looking at here. The just shall the, live the by faith. The just shall live by, live by right. faith, right. But now... We know that there's a fermented wine, and the fermented wine leads to being with strange women. Can we go to Proverbs chapter, is it 31 I'm thinking about, or is it 29? I want to see, because the Bible said this woman commits fornication with the kings of the earth and caused all the, the kings of the earth to drink the wine of her fornication. So and we want to see that, Get them drunk. We want to see why does that, what's going to happen with that, so we can see why we've been talking about this so hard for the last programs. Let's see, what do we have here? What do you have, Patrick? Probably, yeah, for, uh, Proverbs 31, verse 4. It yeah. is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment mm -hmm. of any of the afflicted. Lest they drink and, and forget the what? Forget what 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 what, what, what the, happens to the kings is drinking their wine? The law and judgment. They forget they forget the law of God and sound what? Judgment. Mm -hmm. They the judgment becomes what? Perverted. Perverted. So here God is warning in the last days that the kings who commit fornication, the political leaders that commit fornication, will eventually reject and forget God's law. Calling evil good and good evil. And you got to remember, the evidence of rejecting God's law is when they will begin to make laws that oppose God's law, hmm. especially in countries that had an understanding of the fear of God and at one time advocated his principles of his word and his law. Hmm. So when the kings commit fornication with her, what is the purpose? To forget the law of God. Wow. Right. And sometimes that wine will come mixed. That's right. There's many things according now, to Proverbs that's, 23. That's the one I'm looking for. Proverbs 23. Yeah, that's, that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah. I, I know. I know. Let's, let's go ahead. Can you See, read? I can read your mind. No, I'm just kidding. Can, can, you read, uh, can you read it for us? No, no, you can read okay, it, Brother right. Patrick. That way we can. Yeah, Proverbs, Proverbs 23, what? 29 through 31. Mm -hmm. Look, it read says, it. Uh, Actually, at to 32. 32, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of eyes, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. See, uh, mix, wine get mixed. You were reading, yes, God has a good wine. Mm -hmm. It's been mixed with what? Uh, they mix it with tradition. Tradition. Ah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, nah, uh -huh. so, so Let's this get is, a little this closer is where, here. This is, where the, this is where we have the confusion in Christianity right going on right now. Because we have, we have to interpret, they have interpreted the scriptures where they mixing they, God's word with traditions with the and customs and commentaries with, with commentary. like this. <laughs> that, and, and some people have the... Uh, What's that uh, other uh, Bible? Is that, commentary uh, the other Bible called... Uh, no, no this is, King, is a King James, coming King James Version, but it's got somebody knows Scro Scofield. Scofield. Oh, Scofield Bible Commentary, which yeah. says, for instance, in Genesis chapters uh, 5 and 6, especially chapter 6, that the giants were angels 
who came in unto the oh, daughters of men. Yeah. Now, we know angels do not have the power to procreate or reproduce. Amen. And so, therefore, these giants were not necessary. These were not angels having relations with men or having relations with women yeah. uh, of, of human, with human beings. Right, right. We have to be careful with now, those. We, yeah, we have to be careful with that. So, but, I'm saying, but that was in the Schofield notes, right, okay, know, of the I Bible. Know. So, also, we need to take the scriptures and not necessarily the notes that we're getting from some of these uh, so-called commentaries. Right. right. But one of the scriptures says the sons of men, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, mm -hmm. calling the sons of God demons. Demons, right? Uh huh. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not. Now we know we know better than that now. But now, what I'm trying to get you to see, simply see that we see wine so far is what false doctrine. Mm. And how do we know? We see that very clearly because wine does not false doctrine does not nourish but it will lead you away from the word of God. Right, by the way, why mm -hmm. a false doctrine in the context of the false religion, false, yes. you know, the, 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 those women that not uh -huh. represent let's, the good woman, let's, the let's, good church. That's right, okay? that's right, that's right. What is the woman serving right. to the kings of the earth? Is she why? serving them new wine? No, he's serving no, fermented wine. Fermented wine. How, how do we know? How do we know? How do we know? Because what is the Bible? They get them drunk. They get them drunk. I'm sorry. And that brain and drunkenness, drunkenness is connected with deception. Right. So therefore, the Bible said the kings of the earth. But now, wait a minute. This same woman is making compacts now mm -hmm. through ecumenical alliances with other religious bodies. Right. Now, are they drinking the wine too now? Of course. I mean, uh, what about pro what about Protestants? Pre or evangelicals, are we drinking the wine? Well, if doctrines, uh, it's a symbol of doctrines, in this case, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, obviously the, the doctrines, mm -hmm. uh, the, all the daughters have been drinking the same teachings, partake, partaking of the same doctrines and sharing to the world. Unfortunately, I, I, I'm, I'm told to close. So my friends out there, uh, this is a very solemn topic, even though we try to make it a little more, uh, you know, closer to each one of us. But just remember, Jesus, in his love for us, has been showing how these deceptions or false doctrines or fermented wine has been introduced so we can escape from all those deceptions and drink and partake of the good wine of his pure word. On the Bible. May God bless you Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.